the message from France's newest enemies, we can strike anywhere. And nothing says it better than anti-terror squads stalking gunmen within sight of the Eiffel Tower. The target was a Jewish neighborhood. At lunchtime today, a man armed with machine guns walked into this kosher supermarket and took more than a dozen people hostage. Some of them managed to call their family. I said, don't call, don't call, it's too dangerous. I think she's in the basement or a cold storage room, I'm, I'm not sure. Too many parents here had to imagine that grief. Huddled in a nearby playground, teachers and pupils, as the order came to close all local schools. This is the second time today that France has faced a hostage situation in or around the capital. Whether or not they're linked, the ambition of these attackers is clear. And it's likely to change the way this country views its security, its safety and its society. Officers named two suspects in this attack. They're also wanted for killing a policewoman in Paris yesterday. 32-year-old Amedi Koulibaly, believed to have links to the other hostage takers. And his girlfriend, Hayet Boumediene, who's reported to be on the run. With darkness came the police assault. Local media caught the moment when the commandos stormed in. They'd found the hostage taker praying, they said. A few minutes later, the first glimpse of survivors, some too small to run for freedom, already know how precious it can feel. Four hostages died in this attack, along with their captor. Speaking after the siege was over, President Hollande said the threat wasn't over yet. Français et les Français, à se lever ce dimanche. I call for all men and women of France to stand up this Sunday for the values of democracy, freedom and pluralism, which are very dear to all of us and which Europe embodies. There's relief here tonight at the end of this extraordinary chapter, but anxiety too over how it could happen at all and what tomorrow could bring.